from the Maple View Animal Hospital Studios, this is the WHTC Morning News with Gary Stevens and Peg McNichol on 99.7, 1450 WHTC and WHTC.com. And we welcome you to the WHTC Morning News for this Wednesday, September the 2nd, first and third Wednesdays of the month. We present a farm life with a farm wife, dealing with life on the farm and farm issues with author and blogger Diane Lowe, a farm wife. Follow her on Facebook, and she joins us this morning via the Zoom connection from her family's farm near Hudsonville, and she's on the other side with a guest today. Diane, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Gary. How are you? We are well. Before we get to your subject, I have to mention a story that we got on our uh, 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 services to this morning out of New York, and I think you might have a little smile on this particular story. The New York State Fair has a butter sculpture every year to celebrate their dairy industry, and this year's is called Nourishing Our Future. One side shows a farmer giving milk to a kid learning virtually with help from his mother. The other is of a school worker handing a lunch tray to a child learning in school. The artwork using around 800 pounds of New York State butter took 10 days to complete by artists Jim Victor and Marie Pelton. Not a bad idea. Too bad we can't do it in Michigan because we don't have no state fair in our, in our state. Hey, anytime they can use 800 pounds of butter for anything, it's a good thing, right? It does publicize the industry as well. You have a guest with us and tell us all about Craig Tucker and uh, what he does with your farm in Hudsonville. Okay, um, first of all, I invited Craig Tucker. He's our nutritionist from uh, Hudsonville Farmers Co-op and I'm gonna let him kind of take over. We're right here by our commodity barns and we've got all different things here. And he's going to show you and tell you what they're all about, okay? I'll kind of ask him some questions, but then he'll explain it. Okay? All right, Craig, Craig, go ahead and unmute yourself and let's go to work. Hey, good morning, Gary. Diane's been trying to get me on here for a little while. <laughs> the first time I've so, What she asked me to do is kind of explain what a nutritionist does. So first off, I uh, come out to the farm here, usually every Monday walk through and uh, look at the feeds that we're gonna look at down here through the uh, commodity shed, see what we have for inventories. Um, about every other week, I'll walk through their cows and their dairy barn, just kind of take a look at them. And I work with uh, their herdsmen and their feeders and kind of do some meetings with them guys throughout the year and basically try and put a diet together that's gonna be very healthy for these cows and make them produce the most milk so, uh, that they can for them. What we'll do so, uh, is we'll start here. What we'll do is we'll start here in the first bay. And the product that we got here is uh, distillers. This is distillers grains that comes from the ethanol plant. And uh, they go pick that up themselves over by Lake Odessa. And it's a little bit of a fine ground product. You can kind of see that. And what that is used for is there's a lot of energy in here and some fats. And if you, uh, if you take a smell of it, it kind of smells like a sweet toast. And uh, that, that kind of indicates it's been heated. So the protein in there is digested at a different rate than some of the other products that we'll look at as we, as we come down. So then the next bay, what we have here is uh, soybean meal. And I think you hear about soybean meal on the news. This product right here was actually made it in Zealand. They pick that up and they bring it home. So they buy from a local local processor right up the road here. This is a high protein product, very, uh, very little uh, oils or anything in that, that Zealand Farm Service, they sell the oil out of there. So this is a byproduct of the oil industry. We use this for protein, for uh, muscle development in the young animals, and then it helps with milk production in the older. So next we move down into the next bay. And this is another byproduct of the soy oil industry. This is uh, soybean hull pellets. I don't know if we can go in, take a little bit of a look, but this is a real light feed. So they pellet that so we can haul more on a truck and get it in here. This product is put in there kind of as a digestible fiber source. There isn't a, a terrible amount of energy or protein in there. 
but it just kind of is a good filler, keeps the cows' guts happy, and they keep us uh, keep us uh, going with them cows. So, uh, next product down. This is uh, fine ground corn. The finer we can get this corn ground, the better. This is, uh, if you would grab a hold of it, it would fill in your fingertips and make them smooth. This is super fine. If it's about 425 microns if you were looking for a size. So that's as about as tight as you can get corn ground. We do that right at the co-op and they come in and they pick that up in their semi and haul it back here. Usually about once a week they get that. Corn is a high energy source. So we, uh, we don't feed a lot of corn because we're feeding silage and stuff here, but there is some corn in their diet. So maybe 10 pounds a day of corn. The next, next thing here, this is uh, corn silage. This particular corn silage is coming off from a pile that they have in a bunker silo up the road. Um, they store it either in here or if you've seen Diane's photo in the beginning, they got them silos behind her, sometimes it's in there. Or if you have to drive by the farm, they got the long tubes. But corn silage is one of the biggest components of our diet here. Uh, as fed or per pound, we probably feed 40 to 50 pounds of that per day. And they, uh, they get a lot of energy out of that and then fiber. So this next bay that we're going to look at, this is more of a storage bay and it's a staging area. There's some uh, straw in the back and big tall bales and uh, some hay in the front that hasn't been processed yet. So we'll get, get to that a little more. There's uh, another pile to look at there. So again, uh, so this is here's some straw that needs to get processed, but it will process this straw. It comes from a lynx about like this as it comes out of the bale and they'll process it down into something like that. And we'll feed this to their dry cows, a little bit to their milk cows as, as we make a super mix. So it flows better through their mixer and uh, just kind of a little bit of a fiber, real low energy, low protein. When them cows are in their dry period or their vacation time, they don't need a lot of, a lot of groceries at that time. So we use straw to fill in, in that part of the diet. Here's a mix. This is what a TMR mixer looks like. They put all their feed into this mixer. It's got some screws in there. It'll toss the feed around and get it blended up so we can deliver it out to the cows. We're walking around here. Um, in these big totes, we actually got a product that comes out of Malaysia. It's a palm fat. It's an energy source that goes directly to milk production and butter fat on the cows. So if you were to feel it, it's, uh, it's got a real low melt point, kind of like Crisco. It'll, it'll uh, melt right in your hands. So we got to keep it in the totes. We can't really put it in. They, uh, they put it in themselves. And we can go down the list. This is a piece of machinery that they mix feed with here. It's a big front end loader. They uh, pick things up and haul it around. So once a day, the feeder will come and take all those ingredients that we looked at so far, and he'll mix it up in what we call a super mix. And that way he can come in and he'll feed about 25 pounds of this super mix every cow a day on the farm. So here's another pile of corn. Now this corn is different. This is what we call high moisture corn. And this is corn that they produced here on the farm, put in a silo and ground it themselves. And uh, it never had to go through a drying process. So it's kind of been siled. A um, couple more things here. This is our uh, vitamin mineral premix. It's got all the calcium and salt and sodium, magnesium, everything that you think a human needs, a cow needs to, maybe some of it in a little bit higher forms like calcium. No, there's a lot of calcium in it. And last but not least, we have uh, haylage over here. And this is what you see them guys taking off the field if you're driving out in the country. Um, most guys just took off what they call fourth cutting for the year. Uh, we'll be looking at fifth cutting at the end of September. But this is basically hay that's been ensiled, and it's probably the second biggest ingredient. We feed about 20 pounds of this per head per day in the diet. So that's kind of the long and short of it. I'll be honest with you. It looks like quite a smorgasbord, if you want to call it that, Diane and Craig. Uh, it just seems there's a lot of things. Uh, and as you said, Craig, it's sometimes the super mix, I think, more than anything else. Yeah. So they get a little bit of something uh, from, the, from, the, from all the bins. 
Great. So one of the things people think is you just have a cow and you throw a little bit of hay and a little bit of corn in front of it and voila, there's milk. But farming is really technical. It takes a lot of education and it takes a lot of training and it takes people like Craig to help us do our job. We don't have the time to learn everything that he's learned. So we count on him to come in and take care of our cows for us. So he's just one of the many people that help us become successful in making milk for you to put on your bowl of cereal every morning. It is a very, very fascinating look at uh, maybe some of the unknown or little known nuances of dairy farming with a farm wife, Diane Lowe, nutritionist Craig Tucker. Want to thank both of you for joining us this morning on WHTC's A Farm Life with a Farm Wife presented by... Farm Bureau Insurance, Markop Agency, Diane, Craig, thank you again. And we look forward to chatting with you, Diane, in a couple of weeks. And Craig, wish you well in your future endeavors. Yep. Thank you very much. That is Diane Lowe and Craig Tucker on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC. A Farm Life with a Farm Wife is presented by Farm Bureau Insurance, Markop Agency. At 477 Chicago Drive, just west of US 31 on Holland's uh, north side. Call Mark now for a quote at 396 5728. That's 396 5728 for Farm Bureau Insurance, the Mark Hop Agency.